Good morning, afternoon, I think, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, my own leader, and members of the committee, I thank you for the opportunity. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to address you uh, on this very important issue. I'm Dr. Maria Teresa Mujia, President of the Latino Leadership Alliance, uh, which is the advocacy organization for Latinos in New Jersey. And today we appear before you opposing SCR 188 for various reasons. The first one is the one eloquently uh, exposed by political scientist Patrick Murray in his statistical analysis of uh, why this formula is not right, and also including his invoking of the goals of Donald Stokes. Uh, but we oppose this uh, amendment or a resolution because it disenfranchises 75% of New Jersey registered voters. It literally alienates New Jersey's independent or unaffiliated voters, which are the majority, and denies a shot a fair representation to the Latino community in New Jersey. Uh, that should not be constitutionalized. See, despite their status as the largest minority group in the United States, Latinos are dramatically underrepresented in elected office. Although with a population of approximately 55 million plus in the United States, making up 17% of the nation's population, there are only 28 Latinos out of 535 members of Congress. And this pattern of underrepresentation extends to the state level. In New Jersey, Latinos are approximately 18% of the population, but only hold 1.2% and 10% of state offices. That's three out of 40 senators and eight out of 80 assembly members that are Latino. This level of representation, however, is a high point for Latinos since uh, most of the 80s and 90s, the representation in Congress, for example, lingered in the single digits. The increase of Latino office holding during the 90s and later on can be attributed in part to the passage and implementation of the Voting Rights Act which facilitated the establishment of numerous majority minority districts in which minority voters constitute a majority of the relevant population, be it total population, voting age population, or citizen voting age population. The majority minority districts remain the primary means through which Latino communities can elect their preferred candidates. And at the center of this decision, of this principle, is fair representation of all communities, which is by definition the aim of the redistricting process process every 10 years when it adjusts to reflect the changes in population. See, following the 2010 census, there was much anticipation surrounding the tremendous growth of the Latino community in the state and in the nation and the changes that this would cause to the political map of the state. The boundaries of the 13 congressional districts and the 40 legislative districts will almost certainly be redrawn to make them more equal in population County free all the districts in three counties and municipal wards in over 60 communities will be re-examined and revised for equal representation. In addition, the distribution will cease of seven divisional boards of education would have to be revised. And ultimately, the local election districts throughout the state would have to be redrawn to conform to all of the other new boundary lines so that elections could be run efficiently. That will not be. It will not be. There was much hoopla made by the reapportionment commission about communities testifying and its commitment to ensuring that the new legislative districts will reflect the changes in population and would conform to the principles of being contiguous, compact, and not divide communities of interest. There was much discussion about packing and cracking, and there were even advocacy organizations like the Latino Leadership Alliance of New Jersey, the Dominican American National Roundtable, the uh, Bergen County Women Voters League who proposed maps and testified before the commission in justification of such maps. Pretty much the same issues that were grappled with in 2001 when Democrats took heavily minority districts and distributed their mostly Democratic voters into wider, more Republican districts, giving the party an electoral advantage. Republicans took Democrats to court, if you remember, accusing them of diluting minority voters' cloud. But Democrats successfully argue that doing so would help elect more minorities to the legislation. In the end, instead of redistricting being for the purpose of reflecting the changes in population, 
to guarantee compliance with one person, one vote requirements, it became a tool for political parties to maintain or retain jurisdictional control. The parties settled on maps that protected their controlled districts. Latinos <coughs> remain grossly underrepresented in the state of New Jersey. Now comes Census 2020 and the next round of the districting process, and we begin by plotting how we will take control again. Regarding constitutional amendment, SCR, uh, or in the case of the Assembly, SCR 4, Assembly Majority Leader Louis Greenwald said, quote, New Jersey is a diverse state with continually changing demographics, and we want to make sure this uniqueness is respected and represented. Ultimately, these changes will create a more fair and transparent process, one that is truly representative of the people and even more inclusive. End of quote. That is not so. That is not what this constitution, constitutional uh, amendment would do. The proposed amendment would increase the membership of the legislative apportioning commission, which we agree with, and would impose certain requirements in the process of the composition of the districts established by the commission uh, for the New Jersey legislature. Supposedly, we agree with the increase in the members. We agree that uh, the independent member will be appointed early, and we agree that competitiveness should be at the heart of uh, this process. But this is not exactly what this amendment does. This amendment will make redistricting occur based on average polling data from statewide elections in a way that very eloquently Mr. Murray pointed out. It will bring back politicians into the process, something we thought we had we were done with in 1966. And by saying that elected officials would not be a member, but assigning the, the, the political leadership, the party leadership, uh, members to, uh, appointing members to the commission, it brings them back with a force. It would literally disenfranchise 75% of the voters that would be predetermined in districts that already uh, are controlled by one party or the other. And this is not even mentioned what will do to independent voters who are the majority in the state, are 2.1 million in this state. Fortunately, the proposed amendment is being introduced at a time when the U.S. Supreme Court is considering the case that one might affect state legislative redistricting with a ruling that will kill this bill in the water. Chances are, we hope, that the U.S. Supreme Court will continue to apply the total population method articulated in the 14th Amendment to state legislative districting and reject the even more challenge, we hope. In any event, redistricting suddenly has occupied center stage four years in advance and will be on the voters' minds this year. If the outcome of this process is more competitive legislative elections and more opportunities for underrepresented communities, it may drive up voter, voter interest and turnout if it fails to reflect the fastest growing community in the nation, Latinos, with opportunities for fair representation, it will end up in court. I'm going to end, uh, I had included some suggestions as to what we could do, but in the interest of time, I will just submit my comments to you. But I would end up with uh, comments made by Mammoth University political scientist and pollster, Patrick Murray, who put it in, in a testimony back in 2011. I speak to you as an independent voter. In competitive districts, we will make the difference. Your absolute rule is not to diminish the standard of competitiveness. A competitive map is a fair map in every sense of the word. I urge you to consider a more proactive definition of competitiveness, one that creates the highest possible number of competitive districts with just representation of New Jersey's population. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dominic? So I'll do the closing remarks.